So this week we had tons of news from Odyssey, which is uh, a lander that intuitive uh, machines sent to the moon a couple of weeks ago with the help of several organization universities. And we also have NASA that was there. So we have lots of fun updates on that lander. So let's see if we can get some information from here. Perfect. So this is the lander that was landed. As you can see, we have the, there was the methane and oxygen tank in the middle. And here we have the exhaust fume. We have six legs. So there, there's a reason why I'm explaining those so that you have a good idea of what we're working with. And all around, we had several panels that had different uh, sensors. They had some solar panels. We had some at the top here to make sure that we could make work. The main top, the main reason why we sent this was to see, can we have a company, a private company, send something to the moon with success? So let's see what kind of information we can have for us today. So let's see, I'm gonna go up to hear what we have. So we got some amazing pictures this week. So here's a picture we got on the 27th, so a couple of days ago. And here is a picture of, here we have our lander, and we have here the legs. And this picture was taken about 30 meters from the ground. So here the whole idea was to make sure that we collected as much information as possible. And the other part I want to show is here the helium tank that we have right here. Don't forget that we have a rocket that is fueled by methane and oxygen. But when we have, we, we have, uh, how can I say that? We have this lander that is going down to the ground. We don't want the heat to go up and fry any of the components of that lander. So helium is there to separate the, in, uh, the hot fuel being burnt and the rest of the equipment. And that's important because I'll show you a picture later where this kind of, we can see where it is on the lander and it explains beautifully our, uh, what's happening right here. So let's see if we can look at some of the uh, information. So on the 28th of February, we got some new pictures with respect to what's happening. So we've received some information from this lander and part of that information is indeed um, how it landed. Now I'm using the, the information from Intuitive Machines, which is the private company doing this, that created this, land, uh, this lander, sent it to space. And the reason for that is I know NASA is involved, but I'm trying to support this company because it's amazing to have a public, a, a private company, which are opening the door for you and I, for different companies to send new science to the moon. And that is exciting. So this picture here was amazing. So we can see we were getting close to the ground and you could see here the little pieces of rocks and dust being flown around. So here we have an, a picture and we're looking down. Interestingly enough, you can see that one of the leg here is broken and that is that created an issue with respect to the landing, but the landing was better than expected. So let's see. If you look, so if you take this as being our lander, so the lander was able, was going at the very high speed, at some point had to slow down. So here I have the, the, the rocket, it slowed down, it changed direction and then it was uh, about to land. So this is a picture we just saw earlier. So as it was landing, there was still a movement that was sideways by a few kilometers an hour. So what happened from what the uh, people at the intuitive machine mentioned is that as it went down, there was a little rock and then it would have hit the rock and then would have landed its, on its side like this. And by touching the rock here, it would have damaged one of the legs that on which the lander would so this is just to give you an idea. So here, if we look at the picture again, we could see that the lander here was broken, but we're very close to the ground and then it landed. So the big question is how is it or how was it on the ground? So it took a couple of days, some telemetry measurement and so on. And this is the picture we've got. Let's see if I can make it a bit smaller. Look at this beautiful picture. So we have a picture here from the top of the, of the lander. We have here, as I mentioned earlier, one of those helium tanks. And then we have one of the legs here that is broken. So here there's some interesting information. So as you look at this picture, you feel that the lander is like at 45 degrees at an angle. But here, if you look in the report, it says it's about 30 degrees from the ground. And the reason for that is we don't have a ground that is vertical. Let's see if I can make uh, 
my example a bit bigger. So I don't, we don't have a ground that is at horizontal. And I thought at first that it was like this. What happened is the ground is about 12 degrees in slope like this. And as it landed, it, it landed like this. And apparently for a few seconds, it started to go down like this. So here we have, if you take this and you move it like this, you have an angle of 45 degrees. We have like something like this. So the angle between the ground and the lander is about 12 degrees. So this is what we have with this picture. The beauty with that is that it allows us to be able to say, okay, we have somewhat of an upright uh, lander where we'll be able to do some science, collect data to be able to know more about the moon. So I was listening on, I think it's on Wednesday or Thursday, they gave us, um, uh, how do you call this? A press conference with new updates and they share this information. This was about an hour and a half long. And once I did this video, I'm gonna put the, the video here on uh, in the comment section. So here they were sharing that it landed in a place where it's called, just because I want to see it, I forget, it's called the Malapert, cra uh, Malapert Crater. We're going to talk about this in a moment. You'll see it's exciting. So here we're between 250 to 500 meters to the crater, and we can see on the other side, the edge on the other side of the crater. So the crater, I don't remember exactly, it's between 250 and 500 meters. It's dark. And the beauty with that is that we want to get some measurements in the area to know if in that crater, we will be able to find some water, either some ice or water molecules integrated in the regolith that is the, the ground and the minerals on, on the surface. So let's see if I can make it bigger. So here you have the ground, several hundred meters here, we have the crater. Oh, and you can see some of the lines going this way. And then we have on the other side, the other edge. Now, what is interesting is that we are, so first of all, we have amazing success. We were, and in a moment, we will list all the successes that they've shared with us. I know that in a couple of days, they'll have a new press conference, keeping in mind that this is a project that is, it is completely new. Uh, for the last 50 years, when we landed, when the United States landed on the moon, it was all government contracts. And now we have a private company doing it, and it's quite amazing. So let's see if we can add more information about the science. There we go. So we have to keep in mind to see where did Ode uh, Odysseus landed. It landed here in the South Pole right here. So here in the past, we always were landing in around more like more or less in the equator area. And the reason for that is the place where there's the most sun for the longest time. And when there's sun, there's energy. And it's, that's why we've had landers going there and we've had astronauts going to the moon in this area. So here where we are, we're all the way to the bottom here. So here we are at 80 degrees latitude cell. So here we have zero here, and then we divide in 10 degrees, 90 degrees being the top. So 80 degrees is right here at the bottom. And you're going to say, why are we going so, so much at the South Pole? It is a few reasons. First reason is that we want to make sure that we have sun. We need solar panel for energy. So we need to be somewhat on that um, face of the moon where we have sun. Second, we want to be south enough so that we want to find water. If you look at the crater at the equator side, there's always sun that is uh, shining there. Every 20 days, we have full moons. So that means that if there was any water, it would evaporate and is no longer there. However, if you go on the South Pole and you could see here, the South Pole has seemed to have more craters than the North Pole. So here we are looking into finding craters in which we would have that are permanent, permanently dark where there'll be water, but where sun is available for electronics. So here I was able to go on uh, X. So here, uh, previously uh, Twitter, and we have here someone called Don Petit. Now he had amazing pictures and I want to, um, so I'm doing a shout out for him for his pictures. So here's an example. We have a 90 frame uh, from a ZWO monochrome camera, and that's a couple of months ago. And this is what we get. Now you have to keep in mind that this is the South Pole. So you have to think that this is a picture that we switched 
to make it so that the surface was on the ross. And we have the Meliport A. So this is where the lander would have landed here. And it's possible that here we have this edge of black and then on the other side is some white. The chances are that we are located right at about here. You can see how, how bumpy it is. And the beauty with that is that we hope to be able to find water in solid form for us. Because when we go to the moon, we have to bring all our resources. That means water, energy, fuel, oxygen, and so on. But if we can find water, then we can use hydrolysis with the help of the sun so that we can actually get hydrogen and oxygen as a fuel source. We can get oxygen for, uh, for humans to be able to breathe and hydrogen and oxygen to create heat for a place. Because don't forget that this is, these are the, some of these um, travel we're doing to the moon in preparation for the Artemis 3 two Artemis 2 project and Artemis 3 project. So Artemis 2 will have humans going around the moon again that we haven't done in more than 50 years. And then Artemis 3, we want to land humans on the moon. So here, this is all part of the prep work. And Intuitive Machine is doing an amazing work because like SpaceX, who took an industry that was mostly done by countries because of the need of budget, and SpaceX is a lucrative now company, and Intuitive Machine has decided to say, okay, how can we, with our resources, make our make technology so that we can go? This is quite amazing. If I go back to my, uh, let's see. Okay, if I can go back. No, there's a better picture I want to share. Okay, so this is the picture we've got here. So let's see what we have to think about in the next couple of weeks. First of all, actually, we're going to look at... Okay, we have here the list. Before I explain more, let's look at the list of the accomplishment for this mission that was put together uh, in Houston on February 29th, two days ago. So here we assume, no, we believed it is a successful mission. So let's see what they have achieved. First of all, they successfully landed the lander on the moon, something that the United States had not done successfully in 50 years. So that is an amazing success. The second one, we validated a technology with methane and oxygen that works. Because keep in mind that on Earth, when you have a cylinder full of methane and oxygen, we have the Earth's gravity that, push, that pulls down the, the chemicals, and therefore we know exactly how much fuel we have, how much uh, fluid we have, and how much more time is available for to run the rockets, for example. So here we are in the places where there's much less gravity, and then we often have those landers that are horizontal before they tail to be vertical. So this was one of the biggest problems that was that we know we can successfully use. This is amazing. Next one uh, it became the first commercial se sector and income uh, first commercial sector company including NASA, that it was basically just, they paid a ticket to go there with them. So this was successful. And there was some data that was uh, transmitted. So we have received data from the moon and we've sent data to the moon. I'll talk about the data in one moment. That's a success as well. We landed uh, on the moon. It was a soft landing on the moon. So here there's a few things. First of all, there was a landing and the equipment is still functional. That's the first thing. That means that if we are to send humans to the moon, they will, they will be able to do a soft landing on the moon and their safety will be important. And that I think is important. The next one, so we have, a, um, so when it was in the sky, it traveled more than a million kilometers in order to decelerate and be able to have a landing where we wanted it. Then again, this is all, oh, this has been something that we've been working very hard because there's no GPS satellite at the moon. So this is a success. So here we have transmission of information. So it says here there's a uh, transmitted over 350 megabytes of science and engineering data. Engin engineering data is how the, the lander is, information and telemetry coming from the lander, but also science, um, science, uh, information could be from pictures, temperature, or otherwise reading that 
was collected on the moon and there has been success there. Now with here, it says transmitted over 350 megabytes of information. So here, this was collected, but we also have to keep in mind that uh, we also have intuitive machine that has sent information to the lander as well, because as it was approaching its landing site, there were some issues with some of the equipment. So they had to send some code there to reassess the landing procedure. On, on the ground, they had to, to restart a few things to make sure that information will be collected. That also was sent to the lander and information was able to come back. So this is quite amazing there. The next one is that we were able to have the machine operate for more than 144 hours. You can say, well, how come it's just 144? Let's see if I can show you this drawing. Because when we have a full moon, there's sun all over the surface, once every 28 days, we have a new moon. So that means that the sun is coming and going all the time. So we were able to land the, the, the lander there. And there was enough, you, no, enough help with the solar panels to charge the battery and therefore be able to make it work for 144 hours. Now, now we're going to, the sun is going away because uh, the, the sun will be on the other side of uh, the moon. So that means that we no longer have access to the sun to make the, the, the lander work. There's a few things here. First of all, we have a solar panel to charge batteries and the batteries are making everything works. Now there's a few things here. If there's no more sun, then the solar panels are not working. So it needs to work on battery. The issue though, is that the battery hasn't been tested to be able to spend two or three weeks in a temperature of negative 150, negative 200 degrees Celsius and be able to do the work and then be able to function again in three weeks. So what we don't know is that in two to three weeks, when the sun comes back, will the solar panel be able to charge a battery that will be able to accumulate energy? So that's a good question we'll answer in a few weeks. We do know that probably that the, the solar panel should work enough to be able to collect some of the energy from the sun and have direct uh, current sent to different uh, sensors on, on the lander. The thing though is I don't think there's enough energy to make everything work. So the whole idea here of the battery is the biggest question we have there. Let's see if we can see the other things I wanted to say. And here fundamentally disrupted the economics of landing on the moon. So far we had the countries sending landers, sending probes around the moon, but often budgets were an issue, but not as much as if it was a company. So in order for SpaceX to be a lucrative company, it has to make money. So that means that there's a cost for sending material to the space, a company pays for that, and then SpaceX can continue. Now being able to do a soft landing on the moon, then we can actually change that. We can demonstrate that we can have an economically viable solution for companies to send lenders on the moon. And that is quite amazing. And that brings us to the whole idea here. And there was an, in this picture. So we have this lender who's going to be asleep for the next two to three weeks, and then we'll figure out what information we can get out of it. But this is a first, I'm very happy for them and congrats on that mission. So this is the first. So if you're interested in that, uh, the project, I'm going to put in the links below. The, the links to the company. And also I'm going to put here a link to a video I did when I introduced that project. And you'll see the more we learn about it, the more exciting it is because this is science with data we receive, but also science and engineering to send more to the moon as we go along. So on this, I'm going to put a link here to a video when I edit it and you'll learn something more about this project. See you there.